Alright, so today I'm going to be telling you why the Samsung 6 Series television is the best computer monitor you can buy. Here, I know you probably think I'm crazy with this. Why would you buy a telly to use as a monitor? Well, honestly, it's the best deal and I'll tell you why. So, this one here is the 6 Series. The 6 Series monitor, you can see it right there. <coughs> Um, this is the 40 inch one, the, what, this, one of the smallest ones they make, I think it is the smallest one they make. And honestly, I think these are the best deals in computer monitors you can get today. Uh, and there's only one drawback, honestly, after trying this out for about a month, there's only one drawback I found, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. So why are these better? One of the reasons is, you can actually find deals on these. The other giant monitors, the, the really big ones, the 40s, the 43s, they're very rare items and they're always expensive. You can never find a deal or you get $50 off every once in a while. These ones you can find a deal on because they sell so many of them in every store. Walmart has it, Target, Best Buy, all of them. So if you look here, you notice this says $62.90. Normally this would say $6,300. That means this is, this is actually a special uh, Black Friday version, which is why I bought it. It was cheaper. Um, normally it would be $6,300. It comes with a smart remote. Uh, this is a 6290 Black Friday version. It doesn't even come with a smart remote, but who cares? We're using it as a monitor, not as a telly. So without further ado, let's go ahead and slide it right off there. And there you can see we have the monitor itself, just to give you an idea of size comparison uh, versus the 13-inch uh, laptop here. I'm using that just for the purposes of uh, the demo. We'll uh, go ahead and zoom in just inside there, get a closer look. Okay. So I turned the backlight down on this, uh, just so it matches the ambient brightness a little bit better. But let me tell you why this is so great. Actually, you know what? First, we'll just start with the only negative, the only negative part to using the telly as a monitor. I'll tell you right off the bat, before we get to the good stuff, I'll tell you the bad stuff, is that you have to use a remote to turn it on. Honestly, that is the only negative item I could find, and there's a lot of positive items that make it better than a monitor as far as I'm concerned. We'll start with this. You have to use the remote. It's kind of annoying. Monitors have a power saving state, as you know, when you turn off your computer. Um, when you turn off your computer, it won't turn off on its own. Give it a second here. Come on. It's picked it. I should show you something here in a second. Okay, normally there, there should be stars like flying across here, but it's actually still on. I guess the, the laptop's still sending a signal to it. There it is, okay. So this comes on and then after about, you know, 20 minutes or whatever, this will turn off. So that's the only kind of annoyance you have with this and they have to, you know, get your remote out and, you know, turn it off. Gives you a nice old timey, you know, uh, transition there. <laughs> Closes like it's a television from the 1930s because, you know, uh, retro is all, uh, is all fun these days. And then the other annoyance that, you know, when you turn your computer back on, It doesn't need to turn on by itself. Once again, so there you can see it's on. That's on. Then you have to go back to the remote and turn the telly back on. And you get your nice retro transition again. Um, so honestly, after using this for a few months, that's the only negative aspect I can find to using the monitor with your, uh, using a telly as your computer monitor. That's it. Um, some people have said that the, the stand is an annoyance that these are no adjustable, and they're no adjustable, that's true. Um, it doesn't go backwards or forwards or tilt or anything. But honestly, the very large computer monitors, they don't move either. So I don't consider that a negative, I don't consider that a negative item, uh, to be honest with you, because this is the same as, as any of the other computer monitors. <clears throat> and I'll show you real quickly, I have it queued up. If I ever go to Chrome. So if we look on Amazon, or like 43, normally for computer monitors, 43 is about what you go for. That's the, the cheapest large monitor you'll find. The 14s tend to be a little bit more pricey. I think this panel has to be a good deal. But if you look at these, look at that. That's, that's not an adjustable stand. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's a battery, I don't know why that's on there. You know, that's not an adjustable stand. This Acer, the ET430K, this is probably the cheapest, super huge monitor you can find. Um, in this price range, that one will go on sale for $100 off every once in a while. But it's no comparison to this, to be honest with you. Um, so like I said, the stand, the stand doesn't even move. Who cares? The only negative thing I can find is that you have to turn it on with the remote. 
And honestly, it's no big deal. I mean, look at the money you're saving. Um, you can find these for a good price. You know, I don't know, yeah, Black Friday or whatever it may be. You can find them for a the good deal. You can't find these for a the good deal very honest, uh, very often, to be honest with you. Um, so moving on, um, there are several items that your telly has to have to make it a good, make it a good monitor. And those items are, basically there's three items. It has to be 4K resolution. And if you if if, if you're buying a, if you're buying a, a, you know a computer monitor that's dedicated for 4K, they charge you a huge premium to go with 4K or 1080p or any of those. So that's no good. It has to be 4K. It has to be able to do what they call UHD color, which is actually kind of a it's a misnomer. It's 444 color compression. If you don't have that, your text will get all jumbled up in there. Okay, so you have to, it has to be 4K, you have to have 444 color, has to be able to do 60 hertz, they all do that. And then last but not least, I'd say it can't have a, um, an RGBW display. Now that last one's kind of hard to find because they won't advertise it as RGBW, but uh, the lower end LG TVs, uh, they add a, a white pixel next to the red, green and blue pixels um, along the top and it will create artifacting um, they will create artifacting with your text, so just try to avoid that. Okay, and the other item, so basically, okay, to make a good monitor, it has to have 444 color, UHD color, 4K resolution, and low latency. So this, this monitor here, all the, the Samsung 6 series, these are, I'd say these are the best because they're the cheapest that meet all the criteria. Um, has a 20 millisecond response time, I mean, honestly, you can get monitors that are less than that, but, you know, who cares? You know, really, uh, 20 milliseconds is perfectly fine if you're using it every day. I've used this every day, you don't notice it. Um, and those monitors I was showing you on Amazon earlier, those all have around 20 milliseconds too, maybe 15 for the really expensive ones. If you want to get up to $1,000, who wants to spend that? Um, so those are things you need, low latency, UHD color space, and 4K resolution, and this has it. The Samsung 6 series are the cheapest ones that meet, match all that criteria um, consistently. You know, I'll say that. Um, you can find other tellies, you know, off brands, but you have to make sure they do it. This one just doesn't. <clears throat> okay, so honestly, you know, like I said, the Sony, you can find the Sony tellies are actually slightly better rated uh, to use as monitors, but they're always premium. Sony has kind of gotten out of the cheap market, and they're all premium tellies at this point. Um, that's why I say the 6 series. Um, so this is a 6300 or 6290 as I said earlier. The 6500s are curved, so they have a, you know, a curve to them, you know, it's all the hot thing, the buzzword right now everyone's talking about. I think curved TVs are stupid, honestly, if, it, if you're using it as a tele. <clears throat> when it comes to using it as a computer monitor, I think that actually, you know, if you can find one for a good deal, you may want to go with it. Because the first thing you'll notice when you, when you uh, get into this, is that you're sitting so close to it that your brain, for the first day or two, your brain actually thinks that the monitor is curved away from you. It looks like it's curved in the opposite direction just due to the sheer size. And when you think about it, you're sitting, you're sitting, you know, two feet away from it in the middle and three feet on the edges, so it looks like it's curved away from you uh, when you start, uh, even though it's not. So, you know, if it had a curve towards you, I'd say go for it, but otherwise you get used to it in a week or two. Okay, next thing. What are we talking about? Ah, when it comes to PCs, you can find DisplayPort HDMI adapters, uh, DVI-D to HDMI, but if you can, it's better just to get a video card or if, a laptop if you have it. We'll talk about that in a minute. A video card that supports the monitor at full resolution, uh, 4K, 444, 60p, and we can now go back to Amazon. The absolute cheapest card that does that is the GT. Uh, 710. Um, so if you're buying this for a uh, for a desktop computer, which I'd imagine you would, you can use it with a laptop. The GT710 is the cheapest one that will do that over HDMI, 60 hertz, 444, 4K resolution. However, the GT710 also has almost no gaming ability at all. It's basically no. You're not, not going to play games on it. It has nothing in that department. It's basically built for home theater theater PCs. So even though you can get those for 35 bucks, I would actually recommend getting the GT 1030. This is the cheapest car that will do 
those criteria, 444, 60 hertz, 4K, um, and it can actually play games as well. I mean, of course, it's not the, the best gaming monitor in the world, but it's not bad either, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the prices are high, but you know, all those miners, they're buying up all the graphics cards. What are you gonna do? Once it, okay, so when you plug your computer in, this is a very smart TV, so uh, let's see. So when you plug your computer in, turn it off for a second. This will automatically notice that, see that little icon there? It's a PC next to it. I can't see it anymore. I'll turn it off, and then we'll turn it back on. So like I said, this is a smart TV. It will automatically switch over to PC mode with a little icon like that. Uh, and that's nice. And then the only thing you have to do after that is you have to turn on UHD color. And we'll, we'll go through that very briefly here. Let's see, where's the menu? Uh, so we'll switch over automatically and you have to go into settings. And you have to go into picture. I don't know why this isn't turned on by default. When it knows it's a computer, it should do it automatically. But it does no. Uh, so we'll go, you have to go into expert settings. And back, I have this turned down for the purpose of this uh, uh, this review. And then, eh, where is it? It should say UHD color space in here somewhere. No, where is it? No, picture settings. And I changed this to dynamic. Uh, there's standard, and then there's dynamic, I don't know. The dynamic looks better, um, and I'm, I'm, I don't think it's doing anything bad to the, to the image, not adding latency or anything. Uh, where is that UHD color? That's it, bloody hell, I know it's in here somewhere. General, it's settings. Anyway, I promise you that uh, UHD color in, is in here somewhere. Uh, shh. Oh, here we go. There it is. Okay, so you have to go down to the, the, the wrench at the bottom there. And then you have to go into external device manager. And then you go down to, there it is, UHD color. That's the only thing you have to turn on after uh, you get your uh, your PC plugged in. And you click on that. And you have to turn it on uh, for the input that you're using. Um, and I only, I only turned it on on the one I'm using my PC on. It's interesting, they give you the options. I assume that maybe if you turn it on for all three, it uses more processing power. Um, but otherwise, that's it. Once you turn that on, bada bing, bada boom, you have your uh, giant monitor uh, set up. So that's what it looks like, you have all the plugs on the back. It doesn't have a display port or a VGA or any of that, so you have to use HDMI input or uh, use some sort of uh, uh, adapter from that front. And then uh, the only button on this entire tail is, see if you can see it down there. You see this wee thing? It's a wee joystick. And so it makes it difficult. At first I was thinking I could use the button on the telly to turn it on and off instead of the remote when I have it on my, uh, on my desk. But you actually have to click on that and then go down and then go up to turn it off or turn it on. And while we're back here, I just have to give Samsung credit for this. I know you can't tell, but they actually like counter sync. There's like little hooks on the back of the, the stand. So when you're attaching, it doesn't like fall off while you're trying to get the screws in. It kind of holds itself in. So I appreciate they put a little effort into that. Okay, thanks Samsung for saving saving me a wee bit of time. And then uh, and then going back to the box there, <laughs> one other comment I want to make is that the inside of this thing it is, it is bloody sharp as all hell in there. So when you're taking it out, uh, be careful with your fingers, because I actually sliced my finger on the, uh, the edge of the corrugated, uh, corrugated uh, you know, paper there. It was, it's very sharp, so be careful. Okay, so in conclusion, hopefully you understand now why this is the best deal in computer monitors today. And, uh, and besides the one drawback, having to use the remote to turn it on and off, it actually has a lot of benefits over a normal monitor. For one, it has speakers in it something that normal monitors don't have anymore and honestly they're very good and they go through the hdmi cable so you don't have to use more hookups to connect it it's very good another reason why this is better than a monitor is this actually has an ambient light sensor in it that will automatically brighten and darken the display depending on the lightness of your room that's something that monitors don't do either and there's, there's some other reasons in there. It, ca it can be used as a telly as well. It's also smart, it has Wi-Fi built in. If you do want to watch TV on it and don't want to use your computer to, to get that running, you can do that too. So honestly, 
It does everything your monitor can do, plus the extra things, ambient light sensor, all that good stuff. Did you turn off there? Put it back on. You can do everything your monitor can do, ambient light sensor, the speakers, all that good stuff. And it's a tele and it has Wi-Fi built in and it can do all those things if you want to do that too. So this is why you should buy the Samsung 6 Series monitor and get it hooked up. Once you go this size, let me tell you, you will never go back. It is absolutely incredible. It feels like you're in a, like a command center in, a, in an army jet or something. It's, it's quite impressive on your desk. Um, and if you don't run it, this is another thing I notice. <clears throat> if you have eye strain on your computer, as a lot of people do, you sit there all day long kind of on that thing. Um, you can actually run this at 1080p. And of course, because 4K is an exact uh, four pixels replica of 1080p, it's perfectly mapped out. Uh, I honestly, I mean, I understand that you're wasting half the resolution, but even running this at 1080p, if you put it to the very back of your desk, it reduces your eye strain so much, it's incredible. You can sit there all day long just because the, everything is so large, but it's still very sharp and it's farther away from your face as a normal monitor would do if you want to do that, but it is 4K, so you should probably do it at 4K. Anyway, those are the reasons why this is the best monitor you can buy for the money. Buy it!